Hi there, and uh, let's get to it. Today we're finally going to start looking at the node editor and its many possible functions and workflows. The node editor is in the top right-hand corner of the color page. Every time you click on a clip in your timeline, you're going to reveal the individual node editor controls for that particular clip, and each clip by default comes with one node. We have the ability to add more nodes either by right-clicking inside of the node editor or by clicking on the nodes menu at the top of the software. As much as possible, we're going to employ using shortcuts to generate quicker nodes. The layout of the node editor is an open plane through which you can navigate by clicking on it and dragging. You also have the ability to increase or decrease the size of your nodes so that you're able to contain more complex node trees. Next to the scale, we have the ability to switch between clip and timeline mode. Once you start placing clips into groups, you will also activate the group pre-clip and post-clip controls in this drop-down menu. In the top left-hand corner, we have the ability to disable all nodes by selecting Grades Bypassed. This will turn off all of the effects and grades applied in the node editor. The way we read a node tree is from left to right. The very start of the node tree is your source input. This is where your original video data enters and is then linked to the RGB data of the first node. You can do anything you like on this first and all the subsequent nodes, but in the end, you're going to be outputting this RGB data to the source output. If any of the links are broken, any of the changes that you've applied inside of the node editor will fail to appear in the final render of your footage. A single node represents an instance of your clip with any number of palettes, grades, or effects applied to it. One of the reasons we might want to work with multiple nodes is if we don't want our grades to interfere with each other or if we want to isolate parts of the image in order to start combining different grading techniques. It's an extremely powerful compositing tool that gives you full control over how the clip is affected and output. So we're going to be looking at arranging and combining the nodes in many different ways as well as sharing their key data. Most nodes are corrector nodes, uh, and these are used to apply grades. So here I can start making changes to my footage using the color wheels. As soon as I start making changes using the palettes at the bottom of the color page, they're reflected in the bottom right-hand corner of the node with symbols. If I hover over them with my mouse, it also reveals the names of the effects that I have used so far. In the top left, I have the number of the node, which I can use to enable or disable the node on its own. Or I can right-click on and add a label. I can add another basic corrector node after or before this node by clicking Alt-S or Shift-S. This will drop a serial node, which will have the same corrector properties. And once again, I can add a label and add more effects. Each node comes with two inputs and two outputs, represented as green dots and blue triangles. The green dots refer to RGB data, so this is the visible portion of the image. The blue triangles are key channels, or alpha channels, that define the transparency of a node. So if I add an outside node to my blurred vignette, you'll see that this node is continuing to read the RGB information of this clip and is also taking its key data. So the key data is defined by the power window that's active in this node. And because of this, the third node does not need a power window. If I was to break this link, then I will have removed the effect that the power window has on the second node. To reset a node, you can click on the color menu and choose one of the top three options. You could either reset the selected node grade, which will only affect the node you have selected, uh, you could reset the grades on all the nodes and keep the nodes themselves, Command Z to undo, and you can reset all grades and nodes and end up with your original single node. As much as possible, try to keep your nodes tidy. Now that we're going to start sharing RGB and key information between different nodes at different stages, our trees might get a little bit complex, and that can make it easier to make mistakes or to lose track of what you're doing. So occasionally change the size of your thumbnails, reposition nodes for better readability, and you can also right-click and choose Clean Up Node Graph to space nodes out evenly. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time.